Hello, my creatures of the day and creatures of the night. I bring you joy and not fright. It's Stefan Satani, your host of a comedy advice podcast, bringing you some comedy, bringing you some advice, bringing you something nice. God, why do I keep rhyming? I'm not Dr. Seuss. Thank the Lord for that. I am Dr. Moose because I've just got antlers of entertainment and they are going to maul you when you least expect it. It's just how I roll. People call me Big Moose and because I have gangly legs and I look like a freak. It's just so many similarities. The only thing that's a metaphor is really the antlers. I don't have those, but I saw Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Pretty cool, and the boy had antlers, so uh, who knows? Maybe in the future is what I'm trying to get at here, but what else I'm trying to get at here, and maybe you guys too, is the episode, the actual darn episode, and I know it's coming soon, but I wanted to give you a little sneaky peeky with the guest Darrell Hearns, amazing comedian, amazing author, motivational speaker, and motivational person, just a good guy, had a good chat. He had good banter, so it was fun. We also talk about his really goofy tattoo and much more, much, much more. So you guys are in for a treat. Buckle up, keep your hands and arms wherever you want them because this is a fun podcast. This is like the dad that you get to visit on the weekends podcast. If you want, do you have candy? Eat it, eat it all. Go ahead, That's it's fun pod, dad. That's who I am. So go ahead, just go buck wild while you're listening to the episode. Don't forget afterwards, though, when you're in that food coma, just take your little thumb, your cute little thumb, subscribe, leave a review, follow me on Instagram, follow Darrell. Go and, and use that little thumb to navigate you towards the links to buy tickets to my new show, Trash or Treasure with Lamar Mitchell JR, where it's going to be a tournament style, defending or attacking certain topics, trends, celebrities, et cetera. And uh, it's going to be a great time. It's also, you know, what else is going to be a great time is me telling jokes at JP's Comedy Club this week. The, I'm forgetting my dates, man. The Thursday through Saturday, the 26th through the 28th of August. So be there or be there. There's no other option. That's just what it is. Okay. So thank you very much in advance. And thank you for coming to trash treasure. It's on the September 8th. I don't think I gave that date, but it's in the link in the show notes. You'll get there. All right, guys, I am about out of breath. So I am going to blow you into this episode. <sighs> ah, shit, it didn't work. All right. Let me, let me try the snaps. Here we go. Fuck. Okay, what do I do? Oh my god, I don't know how to do it. How do I get you guys into this episode? Maybe I just do like a uh wee wee. -oo. All right, let me try that. Wee wee wee. -oo. Are you into the episode yet? No, god, god. What do I do? Gee, this is horrible. Maybe there's a password that I have to say. Do I have to say xylophone? Hello, buddy. <laughs> oh, what's up? Man? How you doing? Good. How are you? Were you doing some I'm farming? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in the background doing some farming. <laughs> oh, I love that. Farm to Zoom. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> All That's right, it. hold up. Oh, okay, now see. I can't see you. Did you take oh, you can't. the farm? Yeah, I'm trying to find something different. Um, I was going to oh, use no. my book. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely, you can use your book. Shameless plug, you know. <laughs> I'm here to sell Hey, man, book. that that's what podcasts are for. I would have been disappointed oh, if you... Didn't if I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I was really disappointed in the farm. I was like, you could have picked a better crop too. What was that? <laughs> I don't even know what that was. I was, was just that soy? I, saw it. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know, man. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, man. Uh, I don't like the new Zoom. It, you thing. know, it looks like a, it looks like crops and then there's an airport. Is that where it is? <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, Outside of Yuma? I don't know. I think it was uh, something I took years ago. Oh, that's the mistake number one, going to Yuma. I think oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it just adds <laughs> disappointment to any picture. No, I'm kidding. I love Yuma. <laughs> I've never been to Yuma. But you know what? I'm going to just get my metaphorical Speedo on and dive right into the episode. Let's go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Steph. 
Ryan, and I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest right here from Phoenix. He's a author and comedian. Everybody, please welcome Darrell Hearns. Clap, 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 hello. clap, clap. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, man. I like the energy, Darrell. It's awesome. Nice I feel me. usually... Oh, absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to have you. And you know what? I think we may have seen each other before. Or maybe I've seen Where? you. Where? When? I don't know if you remember, but we might have passed by Yuma, just going opposite directions on the foot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no um i think i may have seen you at a show at house of comedy at mm. philip jewel dietrich rashad's rose Verdugo oh yeah show. oh yeah that was the one that was like i got a i got a knot that night plus i went over time i was like oh man this is this is my oh. great comedy night oh, <laughs> oh no two fell <laughs> I thought you were I thought you were good. I was rooting for you. By the way, Thank for the you. fans Thanks, that are like, what the heck are they talking about? There's a show in Phoenix where you go comedians, they go for five minutes, and then the audience says yes if they want them to go for ten. No, if they want him to stop right there. Darrell did get the no. Not not to just like soak in the rejection here. Because I, I mm, mm, wafting, wafting, but it it was it was uh i thought it was a pleasant five minutes so i did i uh, give you an encore but the rest Thank of the you. crowd did did not agree with me maybe they no, were you no. my folks they like they probably were I, I just i just roasted them most of the set i remember <laughs> I was like yuma let's talk about yuma i'm up here in north scottsdale but yuma let's talk about <laughs> i know my audience <laughs> you ro yeah you romaine growing motherfuckers you e coli <laughs> ranchers oh my god yeah that's <laughs> i know my audience i know where i'm at <laughs> <laughs> i was like that's an interesting strategy it hit me hard i liked it but the yuma folks just not for it so uh, i think probably uh, all like one probably that night at house of comedy like one <laughs> just texted everybody give him a knot right after this i hate that yeah. guy <laughs> uh, yeah yuma the, the yuma city of yuma tried to get you banned from instagram and all that so oh. it was a big ordeal i mean it was <laughs> real tough so Crazy. i'm glad <laughs> the city of yuma versus Darrell hearns and i'm glad you made it through because yuma has no clout <laughs> people are like oh wait it's Yuma challenging him? Okay, they have no power here. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the material I would do. I'd just go up yeah. there, just poo all over Yuma. It's just Puma. That's what I'd be doing. But anyway, Puma. this is about you, Growl. Oh, yeah. And uh Darrell, <laughs> how long have you been doing how long have you been doing comedy for? Um, going on, well, I'm at the uh, I think three and a half mark. Yeah, three and a half years. I started in, uh, in D.C. It was after I got out of the military. So that's where I really oh. got uh, started because uh, I live, uh, I'm from uh, from the Leesburg, Virginia. It's like an hour from D.C. So oh. ended up moving out there just to really start the comedy career, see what it's like, you know, what actually it is. And, you know, I wasn't one of those crazies where it's like, I'm going to get paid at this open mic just by doing it once. But... <laughs> You know, just <laughs> learned a whole lot, man. And uh, it was interesting. Um, and then, that, um, by the I way, like my, mm -hmm. thank you for your service. Not hey, the thanks. comedy service. That, I think, still needs a little bit of work. Yeah, but the yeah, military it's... service. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It, it got a knot. You remember? No, we <laughs> <laughs> so not, not anymore. Service. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please bring the check. Yeah, right. yes. thank you for your service waiter for bringing me that check so quickly appreciate that no but but so three and a half years started in dc um and then when was the move to phoenix did that, that was uh, i think one of that that was the oh my bad that was the um eight month mark i want to say and then somebody told me about a event going on out here and uh, it was when i wrote my first book i'll i'll do it uh the lazy man's hustle when i first when i wrote this one so around that time i just um they told me about and this one that's the best seller so somebody lived out here told me about the event and um i basically said you know what let me check it out let me go to phoenix what's it like ended up loving the area you know because uh, where i'm from it's not as palm tree and deserty so it's very different i said you know what let me move out here see what it's like hit a couple mics early on and uh yeah man it's all the rest is history, man. I just 
enjoy the area and just it's been a learning experience i think i've learned more um doing comedy here but since i moved here of course i learned more here but right. yeah i learned a lot you know a lot um comedy and just met a lot of good people and it's just a powerful thing and the move was worth it that's so. awesome oh, wait i want to back up just a quick second so the event was that related to your book or it wasn't related to the book it was uh it was like a mixed event like mixed entertainer like musicians comedians oh, singers wow. all that stuff and um they just invited me to to get on it and i was like all right i'll check it out and checked oh, it out dang. And had, had some and, fun and, yeah and and when did you when did you pen this book this novel of um, the lazy man's hustle great title the lazy, by the way thank you thank you that was uh 2017 that was early to well late 2016 early 2017 so that was um it was about a year and just um it was just i was sitting there and just the title thank you for saying about the title but just i was laying down trying to figure out the title for the book and um out of nowhere the lazy man's hustle just in my head just out of nowhere lazy man's hustle. i i would love the lazy man's hustle if that was the title and people opened it up and the it was just blank it was like gotcha that's my <laughs> gotcha. hustle <laughs> that's what you get <laughs> lazy man one buyer zero oh. <laughs> hey, make sure you put that on the front put that... <laughs> we, we gotta have a scorecard in the, on the blank page <laughs> oh that's so good so you ended up you you wrote this book and what inspired the lazy man's hustle what inspired the creation of oh, this book basically um i'd got out the military and um I was in the middle of like, you know, where I'm going to do, where I'm going to be at, all that, but somehow still surviving just some money management that I always had while I was in. And, uh, you know, it, it was weird because uh, when I was in, people were having like the really nice cars and people had like Camaros and I think somebody mm -hmm. had a Ferrari, but they're asking me for, for money. I'm like, excuse me, uh, I, want, I want your car. Like, why are you asking me that kind of money? <laughs> You're driving a Ferrari right now. <laughs> Dang. You know, so I was like, okay, that's gotta be like a money management thing. So I just say, you know what? I write to improve like mm -hmm. anywhere. So that's what I write. That's uh that's what the lazy in my house is about. Problems book of power gain and stay from nothing else a coward theory and my recent one, Johnny's of a crazy veteran. They're mm -hmm. all to help. And that's really what uh inspired us, like trying to help those people with the money management issues and you know, if you want to chase your dream, you know, just know what you need to do to really chase it. That's that's super cool and very inspiring. And it's just really bringing to light the advice part of a comedy advice podcast. So I'm glad that finally a guest is able to do that. I also, I want to talk a little bit about that because I feel like money management is something that people, even myself, up until, I don't know, 22 years old, I was horrible at managing money. Yeah, and I ended up watching uh dave ramsey video about how to save money and i was like man this guy's got some wit to him and he's talking a little sense a couple dollars and i thought man maybe i can actually save some money put some in the bank and i don't agree with everything the guy says but i think he put me on the right path where now i've got my own ferrari and i don't have to ask my friends for money for coffee either so it's fantastic no oh. not not Ferrari yet. I've still got the, the 2009 <laughs> Kia Spectra. She hums like a, a hummingbird with emphysema, but you know, <laughs> it's still, it runs, it runs. You know what? And I don't, I don't really, I try to purchase things without making, cause I feel like payment plans are the darn devil. It, yes. And I'm sure there are cases where it's, that's, that's not the case, but like, I feel like these companies, I worked for Rosetta Stone. It was $800 okay. for a piece of software. And then they're wow. like, well, you can, do, you can do a payment plan if you want. Even Best Buy now, they're like, you want the iPhone? Or even Verizon, whatever. They're like, you want this device? Why don't you just make payments on it? I'm like, oh my God, that's, it just racks up. So you're like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. only paying like 12 bucks a month for this and then 20 bucks a month for that. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm paying all oh, this yeah. for this stuff that I don't even own yet, but I have. And uh, 
I am in debt. Some serious. Yeah. Debt, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you're on to something with that. That's another aspect of it. I mean, buying outright, but even building credit, if you want to do that, do that smartly. Don't like put everything on credit, of course, you know, but you know, right. it's just, it's, it's in the book, lazy mouse, man, just pay that thing, man. And you know, credit score is an important thing. It really is really important to life. Mm-hmm. You know, so is money, money, especially if you're going to really go out there and source it. But yeah, that credit score, if you don't have that kind of money, yeah, get it up and handle your business, you know, what, what and of course is- resources. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. I was going to ask, what is the best way to build credit? Do you just max Myself, out Myself, uh, I haven't maxed out my cards. I'm not on that level yet. I wish. I wish I <laughs> I'll just go in and buy a bunch of stuff right now. <laughs> yeah, Comedy Advice told me to do it. <laughs> they told me. <laughs> Step one, buy a Ferrari. Step two, right. buy another Ferrari. So then you're set. You've got a spare. It's perfect. <laughs> Two of them, two of them. I'm gonna give it to Comedy Advice because he inspired me to do it. <laughs> Here's your Ferrari, bro. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Stefan. <laughs> oh my god! I expect that in an Apple review. Got a Ferrari. Apple, okay. Thanks to this podcast. That's I, I hope you see that from all the listeners as well. This is great. On is on, on credit. On credit. On, like, on credit. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's only like a thousand bucks a month. It's fantastic. We're good. <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. So good ways to build credit. Um, well, for me, I've been just credit cards, you know, paying what, what I can at the time. On time. That's really what they're looking for, the on time payment. So yes. that's really what I've been doing. So that's helped me out, get to where I've been. So. You know, awesome. and that's just starting from like the lowest, you know, from where I'm at. And um, had somebody call uh, one of my old podcasts. He's like, "Yeah, my credit score got to 700 after reading the Lazy Man Hustle." I'm like, "Thanks, bro." <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's man, awesome. So. That's that's it, it. Truly is awesome because I feel like we we don't get that type of education, like I said, and it just mm-hmm. it ruins a lot of people. And then we're we as people. We, or maybe we as Americans, mm-hmm. we covet what other people have. And mm-hmm. so we see these people have these things. Like you were saying, friends had Ferraris, but th- honestly, and my, my wife will say this too. They'll be, she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe these people have this car. And I was like, I bet they don't own it. <laughs> They're driving <laughs> it around, but I bet right. they don't own it. They're making payments yep. on it or, or whatever. So, mm-hmm. um, it's pretty interesting how Americans are really about appearance in a lot of ways and appearance, oh, yeah. first impressions and all that stuff. It really has a, a weight to it, but we, and you know what? Those goddamn technology is like, you know what? We've got a screen that you can just crumple up in your pocket by Samsung. It's a phone. You can just do origami <laughs> with it. That's basically what you can do. And, and we're like, how much? $21,000. I want it. Heck take yeah. my money. Take my credit card. I don't have any money, but take my credit no, card and I'll take please. it. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Everything on credit now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm building up my score. So I, I'm trying to get as many phones as I can. I'll get one for my wife too. Oh, That's God. Horrible. My secret, but, I say, you got to keep, you know, keep it low. So I have to say that. Don't, don't go too crazy with it because if yes. it goes too high, they're going to ding, ding you again. So That's another nice. one. So That's credit. So oh, man. <laughs> The listeners and watcher, the watchers, the listeners and viewers here are really going to have to tiptoe and sidestep around some of the fake advice to get to the real uh, advice because we really have a landmine <laughs> of bad advice here. Well, For, uh, mostly sales, me. We're going to have to buy everybody buy stocks and, and Ferrari because the sales are about to go up. All right, <laughs> through this podcast, the sales are going to go up. Everybody's buying them on credit, all right? Just get them. <laughs> Sell your Bitcoin and buy Ferrari. That's what we need to do. Now. It's not, not crypto anymore. It's Caro, okay? So get into it. That's... All right, because, because of comedy advice. It's what hey. Stefan Durrell co-signed. Buy it, all right? <laughs> do it. All right. Switching gears here. Wanted to talk yeah. just for a second about Jottings of a Crazy Veteran. I know that's your most mm-hmm. recent book. How yeah. how recent is it, by the way? Is it brand um, new? That is was it... brand new. Yeah, it was uh, this year. I think um, was it June? Yeah, June. So 
Congratulations. Wow, that's Thank amazing. You. And so it's a collection of stories. I know you said you were in the military. And mm -hmm. I believe in the description that I was reading on Amazon, you had P PTSD. So this was a little bit of a, an in-depth look into your life through some of these short stories. Oh, yeah. The short stories, uh, it was a lot. It was a journal entry. It was a few journal entries that I had um, in there that really showed me um, where my mind was at the time. So mm -hmm. I noticed myself speaking to myself in third person. So oh. in my own journal. Like it's oh. a journal, it's supposed to be I am, you know, you can say this, I'm feel like this, I'm doing this. No, I'm putting little slogans in my in my book or talking like Darrell, this is I'm like, okay, what is going on here? Then I Dang. learned that uh I think this dissociation was a part of PTSD. And I had to really look at it. I'm like, oh, so that's why when I was hanging out with like my family, I don't know where I get like really low for no reason or get really irritated for no reason. And I'm like, oh, okay. So really looking into it and learning what mental health is, you know, very important to learn about. I needed help and I didn't know I needed help. Nobody else knew that I needed help at the time. That's why you mm -hmm. gotta take, you have to be your own advocate. That's what my, one of my therapists told me, you gotta be your own advocate and be aware of what's going on with you. And that's kind of why I wrote the book help others you know not even just veterans just anybody that feels they have mental health issues you know Dang. that's yeah. that's beautiful that's that's Thank really you. cool so um and, and i think that also rings true on knowing when you need help and then kind of swallowing your pride and being like yeah i need to go yes. whether it's seeing somebody finding a therapist that i mean mm -hmm. That took me a while to do, mm -hmm. and um, I did. I didn't. Oh, how do I say this tactfully? Because I, don't say it tactfully. It's your podcast, man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just, just say well, it, bro. <laughs> well, well, because sometimes I I feel like, and sometimes I would think about this. I, I would be like, well, my problems aren't that bad in terms mm -hmm. of I didn't have PTSD. I just get really anxious when a car salesman tries to sell me a Ferrari. And so <laughs> things, just small things like that, you know? And right. so it, it, I sometimes would, would dunk my problems underwater and then mm -hmm. I I'd just pretend that they weren't there or just be like, they're not that bad. And right. I think even though they weren't as severe as say PTSD or I don't know, something else that's more grave, I right. think that some of these things were were preventing me from being the best Steph that I can be. And so Correct. I was I was subprime Steph and mm -hmm. I wanted to be prime Steph. Prime uh, Steph. That's, 72 that's ounce Steph. prime Steph. Yeah, you just put a little <laughs> A1 sauce on there. Mm, saucy Steph. Just at your service. I mean, A A1? Is that? War some Worcester sauce? No, you don't I like A1? Mean... Hmm. Man, I'm, I'm more behind 57. Okay. I'm behind 57 when it comes oh, to steak. Okay. That, you know what? Okay. I'll be, I'll be a versatile <laughs> 72 ounce. So whatever sauce you put okay, on okay. me. I, I, A1. I do like the word you. So it is A1. A1 step. <laughs> step. <laughs> A1 step. War, <laughs> Worcester Steph. Just the, the sauciest. <laughs> You can put me on anything and it'll taste delicious. You know, I don't want to be like ketchup Steph where it's just, it's okay. It makes things yeah, a little yeah. better, but you're like, eh, right. I feel a little bloated right. afterwards. And I don't know, should I have done that? I'd rather yeah, you use. I always find like the proper balance. You know, you got, sometimes you got ketchup with too much vinegar. Oh. And you got it with too much sugar. You know, like I didn't even know ketchup needed sugar. Did you know? I didn't, know, I didn't know either. I didn't know either. <laughs> but that's not how I, I don't want to be too sweet. Don't want to be sugar, Steph. I want to be just a balanced Steph. Not too savory. Right. Not too right. sweet. Not too acidic either. I don't want to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's too, no. too much. Too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well. But, but really, uh, I do like how you talked about bearing your emotions. That was a big thing for me. And what really broke me out of it was really, you know, finally – reaching out, I had to say, and then allowing myself to be heartbroken because it was something I always buried because I didn't have like emotions for the longest. I would like, I try to be stoic, like how, how Batman is. 
not knowing oh, it's a yeah. fictional character. <laughs> like, oh, I don't feel anything. <laughs> Go home, just like, <laughs> I'm good. Nah, I'm all right. <laughs> You know, like, man. people just literally beat the shit out of me. What is going on here? I feel horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. But, I get it. But in my head, I'm just like, when's the next mission? <laughs> you know? I'm Alfred. bleeding inside, but I'm all right. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got a butler just for that too. My Alfred, <laughs> tell me when the next mission is. He's like, do you want a handkerchief to cry? No. <laughs> Bam. <Batman. laughs> Stefan doesn't cry. It's salty, Stefan. Get it out of here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but but yes going back to it i do i i think that is something that i struggled with a little bit and it was something that i struggled with even in my family like my parents and it, i don't think anything against them i mean they're obviously horrible people for not teaching me how to be a decent human being but no i'm, I'm just, kidding no. but uh, <laughs> But no, no, I, I feel like they, they really, they tried the best that they could, but then it's kind of like, I, I think that there's more education out there now. There are more books. There are more things where you don't have to rely so much on the previous generation, AKA your parents. And so my grandparents bless them, but I think they were really stoic and they were saying that complaining was a sign of weakness. So, right. I mean, my grandma, and, and that's another thing that led me to think my problems aren't so bad. Cause my mom would be like, your grandma, she base almost starved in world war two. And she was in the towns where there were bombings and the Nazis came over and they were like, Hey guys, we're going to take over your city. And she was like, well, I can't do anything about it. And I was like, dang, man, I really don't like broccoli, but I don't know if I can talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, so I just had to eat it and it, right. it, it created some issues, but no, I, honestly, I feel like, um, no, it was just generations of suppressed staff and suppressed mm -hmm. Satanis. So mm -hmm. I think that it's really good to be able to recognize and then also try and make some changes on expressing yourself and, and letting out those mm -hmm. feelings really. Yeah. Yeah. Cause mine really came out in a lot of, uh, binge eating. That's kind of where mm. I put on a lot of weight. So I'd always be at every drive through for no reason. Just, ah, I'm hungry. I got food in the fridge, but I'm like, I'm hungry. Let me go to Burger King. Let me go to Rally's. Let me go to, uh, y'all know Zaxby's, but Cane's. So let me go here. Let me go to these places and just eat all this mess. And then I'm wondering why my back's hurting and why my knees are bad. I'm thinking I'm just, because I'm getting, you know, I'm in my 30s. My body's supposed to ache. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, after I lost weight, I'm like, oh, it doesn't feel that bad. Why was I lying to myself? Um, oh, because I still wanted to be sad, fat guy the rest of my life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what. You I, know, so, yeah, I, I get you, man. Yeah, no, I very similar too with the binge eating where I, I would just crack. It was also like a survival thing because there were five kids in my family. Oh, wow. So we, yeah. whenever my parents would just toss us a rotisserie chicken from Boston Market and be like, mm -hmm. I, whoever gets the most lives, I guess, is the strongest. Wow. So we would, wow. no, they weren't, no, no, it wasn't that bad. But, <laughs> but we had that kind of, we had that mentality a little bit where we'd buy things and mm -hmm. they'd, more, my parents would buy things and then we would, I had this mentality at least of if I don't eat it now, someone else is going to eat it later. Mm. And so then I would just scarf it up, scarf it down. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was just, uh, it was wow, not good. Bro. No, so was, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. and you said that's a sort of survival, like kind of, like you said, being with a bunch of, I, wow. Yeah, kind of survival. And then also just afraid of, I guess, a FOMO fear of missing out. Cause if that cinnamon mm. coast toast crunch didn't, hit my my lips it would it would hit the lips of my siblings my brethren mm. and they'd get that cereal that delicious tasty treat and so i'd i'd scarf down the whole box and be like oh right. guys i don't know how rats just really hungry rats with cravings for cinnamon and uh, <laughs> yeah I, aren't rats allergic to cinnamon i thought they were not these these are a very specific type of rat. Oh, They're okay. they've grown accustomed to it over generations. Okay. So okay. They call them the cinnamon toast rats because they've cool. got the, Do they wear the hats? Do you they can wear the see the, white, the, like the chefs? They do, and you can see the cinnamon swirls on their back. 
So wow, <laughs> cinnamon toast rats. Oh, that's pretty Cinna- awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly genetically mutated by General Mills. They're a rare Whoa. breed, but they escaped Dang, the lab. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And got wow, that sounds that actually sounds pretty tasty. Like I want to <laughs> catch one now and put it in a bowl of cereal <laughs> like immediately. The way you just said it, you just sold them to me for some. <laughs> oh man. Eat that. They've got tons. I mean, they've got tons of subspecies, like the cheery rats, the the honey nut cheery rats. They've just got the uh-huh. little, the little uh, Cheerio design on their That's around awesome. their legs. Yeah, yeah. And the <laughs> the fruity pebble rats. They're just different mm. colors. Yeah. That that's, that's the one I'm going to steal. I, I love fruity pebbles. That's the one I'm going to have to oh. find. Fruity oh, pebble man. rats. And if you accidentally kill them, they let out their mm-hmm. final scream of "Yabba dabba do!" So wow, that's powerful. That's man. I didn't even. Whoa! <laughs> I'm about to kill one. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's why they're almost like a, extinct. Yeah. Does it sound like Does it sound like a rat saying it or a Fred Flintstone? Oh, it's it's it, well, it's like a rat saying it. So they're like oh, okay. dabba do. It's like Alvin oh, and the oh. Chipmunks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's Man. good I like, that's awesome <laughs> i might get them now now is there like a barney one too that like steals steals from them also or there, there is yes there's a barney <laughs> one and it's like hey fred keep your hands off my pebbles so it's just it's a whole range of characters it's wow. insane yeah all rats all rats there's count chalky rats too the wow. they'll, they'll yeah it's just amazing it really is general mills uh that that might end up being our food source after a while if we run out of cereal then we might have to just rats. rats wow, wow. flavored rats yeah that's flavored rats all right well <laughs> let's scamper on by that subject and let's get into the advice so first off before right. we answer these questions Sorrel, let's do this we've got um what I like, you know, have you ever felt down? Have you ever felt like, you know, you just ate too much cereal or perhaps Mm -hmm. you just spent way too much money on a Ferrari or maybe you used a zoom background of Yuma and you're like, you know what? I need a pick me up. So what better (laughs) to pick you up than an inspirational quote? And I I have an inspirational quote in my back pocket, but I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes, they just really cling to when they're having a bad day or they need to be motivated. So Darrell, do you have any inspirational quotes? You better. Um, um, yes, definitely. One of my most in a, like inspirational quotes. Um, I, one of my favorites and, uh, it's, it's just my, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, stay powerful. That's always been my thing. Just stay powerful, stay you, stay boldly you. That's what that means. It's stay boldly, yourself just like you're talking about the best you the only way you can become the best you if you stay you to improve yourself you got to know where you are in the end so stay powerful stay powerful i love that i love that because sometimes i think oh i might be a little weak i don't know if i can do this i don't know well i get in my head and i'm if i say that stay powerful i can just reach that level i can stay at that level of great Mm -hmm. A1 Steph, maybe Cinnamon Toast Steph, and just cinnamon keep toast those stuff, yeah. cinnamon swirls of glory and be able to just go through my day a, in a jovial manner. Just yeah, but never do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah i need oh my god man imagine if you had a a motivational rat to just be if you're feeling down just have it and then it's oh oh, thank you little fred rat amazing i love that that's beautiful thank you for that quote darrell that was wonderful and inspirational i've actually got a quote myself and it's not by any person whatsoever it's actually by a robot okay the robot's name is Inspirobot. And so okay. if you go to inspirobot.io, you can just click and it generates a quote using AI and searching in the depths of some of the most inspirational and meaningful literature of mankind. Perhaps I like the, it. To- the Torah, the Bible, Batman comics, the back end of a <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch Box. 
like anything. It. And it goes back and it, it puts all the wise words together for an inspirational quote. Okay. So Perfect. this week, InspireBot says, you should spy on your inner child. It's true. Yeah, I absolutely. InspireBot nailed it this time. I feel like you really, you got to peek. You got to peep on your inner child because sometimes, sometimes, I, we were just talking about it. You yep. get too caught up and you're too interested in Batman, big old stoic Batman, when your inner mm-hmm. child is like, hey, little Bruce, back before Mama and Papa Bruce got battered by bullets at the movie theater, yep. Yep. And, you know, when he was happy and he liked to fly planes, maybe he even enjoyed mm-hmm a non whole grain cereal, like a cinnamon toast crunch and maybe like playing with his friends. He wasn't such a little loner, little emo boy. That's the inner child that you want to tap into and be able to, you know, have some fun once in a while, pop on the roller skates, go to a rink, maybe watch a movie with some cuss words in it and some fun. I don't know, some dick jokes, get that inner child out and playing so that you can be a little happier. What is that? You also want to spy on them because, uh, you know, you never know, you know, you know, when they say it gets too like a kid gets too quiet, they're doing something crazy. He might be messing up dishes in there. You might you spy on it. You know, you got to make sure they're doing good. You know, you don't want that's that, true. You don't want yeah. to messing up your inside there. Jeez, what's going on? Oh, no, man, you definitely don't. You got to be in touch with them because they might, inner child might just come in hot and blurt out something where if you're talking to your wife and she's like, does this dress make me look fat? Inner child is like, yeah, and you're done. You're done. Divorce. Spy. That's it. Spy on that mother. (laughs) Spy. spy. Keep that door open. Make sure he's going to first grade on time, every time, all right? Make sure they're learning their etiquette. Okay. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Because then they'll, if if not, they're gonna be like, yeah, let's buy the Ferrari, and then you're done. You gotta hand <laughs> over done. that little credit card. Oh, hand over that credit card. Hand over the credit card. That's, the limit is a thousand dollars, but you're gonna make them put the Ferrari on there. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna tell them no. Put the Ferrari on this a thousand dollar credit card. <laughs> okay? Can I give you my Costco card? Will that work? <laughs> I'm building credit, sir. Can I? <laughs> the guys on Comedy Advice told me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that I feel like we're very nice and inspired, thank you, InspireBot. Yes. Thank you, Darrell. Thanks, we're gonna InspireBot. Stay, we're going to stay powerful, and we're going to dive into these questions. This first one is from Reddit. Well, all of them are from Reddit, but this first one says, I chipped my friend's tooth, and I'm not sure what to do. My friend and I were out drinking tonight. She told me her legs hurt, so I messed around and gave her a piggyback, which ended in me not being able to hold her weight and dropping her forwards over my shoulders. She landed on her teeth and chipped one. I'm not really sure what to do. She burst into tears, basically said her parents would hate her now and be so disappointed and shit. I currently have $500 to my name. If this ends up not being covered by insurance, I'm not sure I'll be able to afford it. I think I just need some directive advice and a little bit of reassurance from someone who isn't my internal monologue that things will be okay and that she will laugh about this later and it won't be a massive deal where I go broke and she ends up not really wanting me around anymore. I'm so sorry if this sounds selfish. Stream of consciousness, I suppose. I just want my friend to be okay and to feel about it. Okay about it too. Okay. So, Ooh. yeah, that's a lot. That was a lot to take in. That was a bunch. Let's do chip tooth. Oh, that's scary. You know, teeth are like one of the most important things. You know, I, I know this. I've gotten turned down for having big teeth like years ago. So what? You know, oh yeah, oh yeah. I got turned down for that. I'm jealous Actually, of your teeth, man. They look great. I, thanks, man. Plus, I got offended because uh, one chick. I don't know. You know, sometimes women spit game different instead of just saying, "Hey, I'm interested." This woman uh-huh. told me I look like Hugh Grant. Who's Hugh Grant? Is that the guy? Wait, look, look. hold on. I'm going to Google. I, ha- Google. I have the Google him, and that's why I got offended. I was like, where did you get this from? Ma'am. That's a handsome man. <laughs> I'm, oh. just, I, I'm just, she gave me, I didn't like it. I didn't like, ma'am, what are you doing? <laughs> like that kind of weird guy from. That's, you know. that's, well, good for you, man, if you're getting those. And I mean, you're staying powerful because you're like, Hugh Grant, nay. I'm like a, 
<laughs> freaking Bradley Cooper or something, huh? Yeah, me, yeah. Me, yeah. Meanwhile, I get people have said that I look like Napoleon Dynamite. People have said that I Damn. look like Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh-huh. I I don't get the most flattering comparisons. Some people really? they say I look like Tom from uh from Thigh Beta Phi or whatever. Just a wow. white dude at a frat house. A frat bro. <laughs> so Damn. I've never if I got Hugh Grant, I would be I would be uh <laughs> Floored. I would be flattered, but no. De- okay. Darrell is like, no, no, no. I Hugh Grant. Out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh God. Okay. Hugh Jackman or better. Okay. Yep. Ooh. yep. <laughs> All right. Well, good for you. Okay. So you got but, offended at that. What did you tell her? What did you tell her? I just, I just, I just walked away. I think I had a teardrop go down my eye. It was when I was really sensitive. So that's when I was just, uh, she thinks I look like Hugh Grant. I thought you away. were. <laughs> I thought you were going to try and, you know, give some back, just to slap back with, oh, yeah, well, you look like Penelope Cruz, okay? You're, I, okay. I should have. Julia Roberts? What is this, huh? <laughs> I should have. I should, should have did that. I feel, feel stupid now. Thanks for following oh, yeah. me, Stefan. <laughs> I'm a, let's invent the time machine. That's what we're going to put the credit card. Put the on the credit card that we get. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, put it on credit, please. I, I think... Well, I always like to think before I do something, before spying mm-hmm. on my inner child, I usually mm-hmm. ask myself, what would Hugh Grant do? And yeah. then, you know, he usually answers my questions. Right. He's like, yeah. He's like, what are you asking me for, Dick? Do your own shit. And so then that's I'm true. like, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Hugh Grant. That's <laughs> you found him. But what I want to say for the friend, I have to say, just give, just build her confidence up. All right. Just build her confidence to say, Oh, you don't even notice it. You know, maybe get her like a little, like, you know, like those fake teeth you can get out like the gumball machines or look like, like redneck teeth and stuff. Get those for her. Oh, just have her wear those around. I and like be that. The next I, level. I like that. Or you could get her some vampire teeth, you know, the ones that even you better. stick in her mouth. <laughs> oh man so she'll oh man she'll look so dashing and i know that twilight is still kind of in vogue so people right. are like oh my gosh are you a vamp and, or whatever they say i don't know what the slang is <laughs> are you a, a little vampy and she'll be like Arr. and so i think that that could get her a lot of dates yeah. um, instead of looking like a piece of trash with chipped Damn. teeth so oh. no, i'm kidding oh just kidding. Oh, just, kidding. <laughs> just tell her to embrace it that should be we're gonna make her a T-shirt. We're gonna send embrace. it to her. No, not Maybe. embrace. What, what you said before? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, no, like I can't remember what I said. Tooth makes you look like trash. Oh yeah, that that part. Sorry. <laughs> We're Sometimes I just that T-shirt. I'll spit things out and then I completely forget about them. Just throw them into a hot garbage pile, aka this podcast. Okay. <laughs> I like this. You know what though? Yeah. You know what I would do if What's if the, with friends. If mm-hmm. they really needed something from me, like a kidney, I, I probably wouldn't give it to them. But a good friend would give it to them. They would donate what? their kidney. So I would I would suggest to this person, donate your teeth. If you can't oh. afford to be able to fix theirs, mm-hmm. yank yours out. I don't know if you wrap it around a string and then shut the door or how it's done these days. I think YouTube will probably have some tutorials. Of course, of course. That's probably the best way, though. You're probably yeah. Yank out your teeth, put them under their pillow like a reverse mm-hmm. tooth fairy, and then mm-hmm. so when they wake up, they'll find some teeth, maybe some blood, I'm not sure, and they'll be like, mm-hmm. God, or maybe Allah, answered my prayers. That. And teeth. That's it. That's, man, that's you. I, that's why you're here, stuff, And that's the best way to solve problems, man, <laughs> right there. Do that for your friends, everybody. Do that for your friends. Donate Jeez. some teeth. You know what? I why why are people organ donors when they die, but they're not teeth donors? That's what I I, I think. There are so many teeth out there that could be right. donated, whether it's a fashionable necklace or mm-hmm. just for somebody's mouth. Because I mean, a, teeth can really make or break the appearance. If right, you know, if I if I have just my mouth over here and we're talking, and then I was like. Hey, let me just flash you a smile quickly, Darrell, and I don't have any teeth. <laughs> you might think less of me. So No, no, man. I'll be cool. If you didn't have teeth, I 
man, I challenge you to like a jello eating competition, man. That'd be the coolest thing in the world. I'd be like, that's, that's my homie right here. He don't got teeth, man. That's old toothless Steph. Yeah, he. You can't understand a word he says. I don't know why he has a podcast, but uh, he, he's great at just. I will watch rah. that podcast though. <laughs> It would be brilliant. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to a comedy of life podcast. Yabba dabba do. That's pretty much the only thing that you would understand me saying. What, what the toothless stuff it eat today? That could be a segment. That could be a whole segment. Oh, my. That would be great. That would be fantastic. What did I, Or to just a challenge. Fans could submit what I should eat, and then I'd just try and do it. Yeah. So maybe slice of pizza no maybe a uh i don't know what's crunchy some chips some yeah, uh yeah. S- some fruit pie no not fruit pie fruit candied fruit i don't know we can <laughs> we can workshop that later once i lose all my teeth hopefully yeah. not in the near future but i'll be um steph in the gum ginger steph ginger stephus i don't know i'll workshop the name too i've got some time for that as well hopefully but anyway Ginger stuff or something. Good luck. We've given you a lot to chew on, so don't break your teeth on it. And we'll move on to the last question. This last question right. says, <clears throat> so my partner wants a lot of tattoos in the future. They have mm-hmm. no tattoos as of now, but recently they've told me they want a ton when they get the chance. I love mm-hmm. them a lot and they are my future, but I don't like the look of a ton of tattoos. I'm not against tattoos. If you want one, I encourage you to get one, especially if it has a big meaning for you. I just don't personally like the look of people with a ton of tattoos. Oof, what do I do? Do I tell them or do I just live with it? Wow, that is like a big question right there. That is, man, you know what? Now, are they like married or like what is the end result? Oh, like. Good question. They say partner. Right. So it's got to be pretty, it's more serious perhaps than boyfriend BF and GF or BF and BF right. or GF and Right, GF right, right. Sure. But yeah, it's got to be pretty serious. But Let's I mean, say, yeah. man, ton of, ta- a ton. That was a literal a unit of measurement. They want a ton, 1,200 pounds of tattoos, basically. That's a lot of tattoos. That's a, that is a lot of skin to cover. And, uh, you know what? I, I love tattoos. You know, it's great artwork or like, yeah. you know, you know, when you see somebody in full, it's like, oh, man, there's a lot of art here. What is Whoa. Wow. It's like, where's Waldo for my Waldo? I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Amazing. You know, and you know, it's, it's like a blank canvas. And our, our body yeah. is like a, a piece of paper. And when a right. tattoo artist named Chaz puts pen to it, it makes mm-hmm. art. And some right. art is less beautiful than others. Um, of course. And some is more unique than others. A heart right. with mom sketched in the middle of it might not be the most That's... unique expression of self. Right. No, but... like I've seen I've seen some great ones. Like I have one right here. I got a dragon. And this is probably like the worst idea because the more the bigger my arm gets, the smaller the dragon gets. I thought I was gonna grow off my arm. So I don't know. I may say I've had mushu on my big arm for no reason. <laughs> oh like, my God. Yo, the real, let's, let's go to the store, man. I'm like, oh, no, nah, Mushu, I'll get in oh. trouble. Go, oh, go talk to Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> like, oh, Mushu. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little tattoo, but just saying, man, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I don't mind tattoos at all, man. Tattoos are cool. You know, especially with a bunch of, like you said, good tattoos are awesome. The thing I hated about Agreed. this one is that is that it kept it kept burning after I got it. So it wasn't like after it healed and like everything, it kept burning. So I didn't know that was like, is that's a thing for tattoos? <laughs> that's why you, I would hate having a tattoo. But yeah. Do you think that it was Mushu's dragon breath? The fire breath was just causing it to continue to burn? It, it probably was. It was probably the, the you remember the dragon they took the place of when he put the stone on his head? I'm about to help a lot out. She does with you. Just paying me back for being a fan of the fraud that oh. Mushu was in a movie. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Well, dude, I, I'm impressed that you have Mushu. I feel like. <laughs> 
that's one of my favorite characters and one of my favorite Disney movies. Man, I loved that, really? especially oh, yeah. yeah, especially oh, yeah, with the Mulan good. yeah. Okay, maybe he wasn't one of my favorite characters, but he was pretty good. Uh, right. And he even Eddie Murphy even got a part in that "We Are Men" song, you know? Yeah, yeah. I remember, like, dude. I think the person that really carried the movie though was the cricket. You could not have Mulan without the cricket. That's oh, why the yeah. the live action one was horrible because they didn't have the character of the cricket. Just like Aladdin, you know who carried that movie, right? Abu. Who 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 you think carried the movie? Who you think? Oh, genie, really, genie. No, no, lamp, no. Magic carpet. Oh yeah, carpet. Oh, he did. He did thread uh, it along. That's true. He, you wouldn't get a whole new world. He wouldn't oppress Jasmine without magic carpet. There was no genie involved in that at all. Magic carpet just said, "Hop on my back, and I'm gonna show you some stuff." And you're gonna start singing that song we practiced earlier. And then he ended up impressing her. Oh man, that is a good point. Car. Oh, a little carpet. Man, magic carpet, yeah. You, you know what? And it's this Disney has mastered this formula for making a successful movie. They've got a serious character as a protagonist, and then just some adorable side piece by their side. And you know what they've done? They're like, you know, just something adorable and cute, like Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian, like Cricket or Mushu yeah. and Mulan. And you know what? They're they're like, we know how to make it more successful. Just add more adorable side pieces, an army right. of adorable side pieces. Like Aladdin, they had carpet. They had maybe not genie, um, but he was very lovable. And then yeah. uh, there was a boo. Raja yeah. was a bigger but still adorable creature side okay. piece. So exactly, and it is you know what it is. that that Jasmine treated him like like he was a cat. Like she didn't own a big tiger. She treated it like it was a cat. The exactly. Whole, like, you know. That just shows you how fierce Jasmine is. That's how big her personality is. We're talking oh, about man. this girl has a tiger, a literal tiger, not a like a cat that's called tiger. It's a tiger. And she's like, get over here, Roger. Come here. And just patting it and stuff. And it's laying on her, like, about wanting to eat her. You never saw Raja eat. You never saw, like, he had a big meal or nothing. No. He might no. have been vegan. He might the have been, Jasmine might have made him vegan. Oh my God, that's so true. And think about how many minds that poisoned where all these little girls were like, I want, you know, fuck the pony. I want a tiger. And they go, yeah. they go to the zoo. They think they can pet it and bam, off, get a big old gash from a scrape or maybe a bite. Who knows? Some fangs might've entered some flesh and they're, they're done. They might not have an arm. And no. it's all thanks to Pr Princess Jasmine treating Raja like a non-dangerous animal. She's, it's a wild animal. Correct. So Disney Correct. should put you, a disclaimer there. You can get that with ponies, too. That's the thing. Ponies bite like hell, too. <laughs> Have you ever been bit, been bit by a pony? Like, no. Any kind of no, oh, because yeah. Disney hasn't made a movie about ponies being cute and adorable. So I haven't been poisoned. I've still, I have still I stay away from ponies because I still trust my instincts that they're dangerous. Oh, yeah. Ponies are horrible, man. You're going to get one and just like, it's going to bite you. Then just take a big dump in the middle of your living room and then just stare at you, wait for you to clean it up. And we're not talking solid poops either. We're talking about like a big pile of like diarrhea that you oh. have to scoop up with the shovel. That's what ponies do. Okay. Don't, don't think that I don't know this. Okay. Maybe I asked my dad for a pony for my 10th birthday, maybe. Okay. And then this man got one for me. <laughs> and it, it, this might actually happen, all right, Stephen? A, a <laughs> diarrhea in your in your <laughs> living room? Yes, and this is like we're talking about like a like like an apartment. Like this. Okay, <laughs> okay. At this point, I blame you zero percent, and I will have to talk with your dad about getting a <laughs> pony in an apartment. That right, sounds. Right. And also, your landlord did he? Was, was he involved in this decision? It'll, it'll swept under the rug. It'll swept under the rug, you know. Was it <laughs> a know, magic that. rug? Was it a magic carpet to be able to hide that pony? Because that is quite a big thing to sweep. That might have been my love. That might have been where it started. He probably, that's probably where it started. This magic carpet just going over it. And I'm like, oh, it's no longer there. So cool, magic carpet. <laughs> You're the best. 
Ma- and then Magic house. Carpet rolled the dead pony and was thrown into the dumpster. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how that story ended. Oh man. Well, I don't know what to think about that except. I know, man. Except I hope you don't have any any pony bite scars because that would be a horrible bar ter- story to tell. They're like, did you, did you get bit by a shark? You're so tough. I mean, besides the Mushu tattoo on your arm, you're like, well, <laughs> this right here, pony. It was at least three feet long. <laughs> it was it was Rainbow Bright. Got me. I named it Rainbow Bright. <laughs> it bit me. Sparkles <laughs> got me right here. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, what a beautiful magic ending for this podcast. Darrell, first off, just wanted to give you a huge thank you for jumping on the pod, talking a little bit about your books, and mm-hmm. and delighting me with some uh, comedy condiments as well as some advice. You know, it, but, you know, I kind of interrupted. What was your – what's your answer to the question? What's your answer before we even sign off about the tattoo? What is your – Oh, break up with them. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If, if they're going to make a, a change, beauty is skin deep, but tattoos mm-hmm. are above the skin. And so I think mm-hmm. that that's okay to judge. And so if they're going to get a ton of tattoos, then you have the right to be able to leave them and be not judged. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's a horrible answer, but you know what? <laughs> I am uh, not going to go back on it. I, it's in ink. So... All right. I'm just leaving it there, and uh, I'm not going to say it tattoo times, just the one. Is, and is, is it in, in body ink, or is it just ink? It's in body ink. It's actually okay. on my chest, and so okay. I'm, I'm actually on my buttocks. There's a tattoo artist right behind me. Chuck, can you okay. make sure it's in color? And in case <laughs> please. So I'm going to have that answer. So okay. that dump, dump this douche. And... <laughs> Right, just like a, a tramp stamp right there above the, the buttocks. So nice. that's the answer. Yeah. But anyway, right. thanks for coming on the pod, man. It was a great Thank time. you, Steph. <laughs> man. Hell yeah, brother. Thank you, man. <laughs> oh, man. I know we talked a little bit about it, but where can people follow you? What would you like to plug? What have you got going on? All right. Well, um, you know, one more time, thank you again for having me on, Steph. And um, follow me on Instagram. I'm Darrell H. Um, Twitter. Darrell HD, my Facebook, Darrell Hearns. Um, you can, um, you know, find me all over the valley. I'm actually doing a book signing uh, at Lacuna Cava. That's going to be this Saturday. I don't know when you're going to publish this stuff. <laughs> it's uh, Saturday, July 17th. So please, I don't know. <laughs> but cool. July 17th. Be, I've got, that's my list of folks that I have to edit and schedule. So it might not make it out by this Saturday. It might make it out by good. Saturday. This next Saturday, 2023, but it's not going to be that late. No, 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 no. it's not. It's all good. But But, yeah, well, yeah, Lacuna Cava. (laughs) Um, Nice. Nice. July 17th. uh, I'll have books, uh, Johnny's and Crazy Veteran, available for signing and do a little speaking there. You're more than welcome to come to stuff, and I promise (laughs) to hang out. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I'll talk with the wife. Maybe we can go there, bring some Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and... That'd be great. Maybe a tiger or two. Uh, who knows? Yeah, but that would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the new. That's the new catchphrase. <laughs> I hope yeah. that you can set it as a ringtone whenever I DM you. You can be like, <laughs> You know what? I, I just imagine two sh- instead of a shoulder angel and shoulder devil, just shoulder Flintstones, where the one will be like, yeah, but that would do, and the other one's like, yeah, but that would don't. Bitch. Oh. <laughs> Is, is that the Barney one that's running away with the That's pebble? the Barney one. He's got yeah, okay. he's he's like, no, yabba dabba, don't do that, please. And then Fred. <laughs> yabba dabba do. You should. Thanks, Fred. Oh man. All right. Cool shit. And, and with that, we're gonna leave. And thank you, audience, for for watching this, for listening to this, for letting the sludge just go right down your soul. And please. um I think if there's anything to learn from this podcast, we a couple things: get tattoos all day, every day. Um, especially get that mushu all over your two shoe, and uh, pet tigers are okay. Go on credit for everything. Buy all these things and the Ferraris, and 
Yeah, just subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Just do that, all right? So with that, give you a big old gooch smooch and bye-bye. And that's the episode, everybody. What a magnificent audio experience. I hope your ear holes are just blasted from all the good times that you guys just had. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to talk about how I split open your mind and your eaters, just gaping with excitement and entertainment, go on over, leave a review, Apple Podcasts or wherever you, I don't know where else to leave a review, Facebook, Instagram, just comment, share the stories. And if you want to follow Darrell by his book, give him some support, go on and do that. I encourage you to go do that. All right, guys, you guys, I don't know if I tell you enough how awesome you are, how good looking you are. Keep doing what you're doing and don't be afraid to dream big. Okay. And don't be afraid to follow those dreams. All right. And I don't have anything else that's really juicy. So I'm going to leave you with a dry goodbye. Goodbye. Love you guys.